Ding dong YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Jobless Coder, and today I'm going to explain to you why I, as somebody who is gay, somebody who is liberal, somebody who is very progressive actually, support Donald J. Trump. So if you're curious, or maybe you're confused, or perhaps you just don't understand why it is that anyone, let alone somebody who is liberal, gay, and progressive, would support Donald Trump, then I encourage you to watch this video where I will be explaining to you why that is. And in order to do so, I'm going to first have to take you back to 2016, back to the election of Donald Trump when everything was going on and, and all the shit that was surrounding him and kind of explain to you at the time where I was, how I was feeling. And I did not like Donald Trump at all back then. Not a chance. I hated him just like everybody else hated him. Despised the man, despicable human being. I was on the training with everybody else that was calling him racist and a womanizer and you name it. I was absolutely there and 100% in agreement. I did, however, think that he was the better option between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump because, yes, while he was racist and, uh, and a white supremacist and all the other things, um, I really do think that Hillary would have taken us into World War III with Syria and Russia. So I'm just making that very clear. The other thing that I need to address before moving on is that I am a Canadian. And up here in Canada, we tend to get a lot of flack from our American brothers and sisters over our um, interaction and our, what's what I'm looking for, dedication to their election. And I will say that we maybe not necessarily get as much flack as somebody in Europe or some other foreign country when they talk about the United States, but we get our fair share of like, what's what's wrong with you guys up here in Canada? Just leave us alone. Stop meddling in our election. But you have to recognize and understand that, first of all, we are the America's closest neighbors and allies in trade, financially, business-wise, you name it, we're just right there on the border. The other thing that you have to also consider is that Several Canadians have dual citizenship, so while they might physically live here in Canada, they can still vote on the American election because they have interests in the American election. Um, it, it impacts them personally. And the final thing you have to consider is that, by and large, on, on mass scale, Canadians know more about and care more about the U.S. election than whatever the fuck happens in our own politics. The Prime Minister who appeared to be hiding a bagel in his desk. <laughs> Even people that I know, so for example, I am in the furry fandom, and the chairman of one of the local furry cons happens to be extremely political on his Twitter account. Like, I mean, almost every day there is one or more or several posts about how Donald Trump is racist and a white supremacist and evil, and if Americans uh, uh, just, you know, smartened up and voted him out, then everything would be wonderful and perfect. And I think that the stuff he says is outlandish and a little bit off of the edge and I'd like to maybe correct him and call him out on constantly putting out all this stuff um, accusing Donald Trump of X, Y, and Z, but I just don't engage in conversation with this particular individual at all because he happens to be the chairman of the local furry convention, which I actually in enjoy going to and would like to keep that privilege in the future to go to. That is how contentious the American election has come to the Canadian border is that I might not be allowed to attend some kind of convention going forward if I said anything to this guy about the fact that I think he's wrong. It is insanity, okay? This stuff tears people's lives apart. Even up here in Canada, people have been disowned by their own family members for who they do or do not support in the American fucking election. So don't lecture me on being a Canadian who's involved in American politics.
The other thing that a lot of Americans need to recognize and understand is that, and this is coming from both sides of the spectrum, whether you're left or right, there is a lot of talk recently about a coming civil war. And I think there is a great number of people, regardless of whether they're left or right, regardless of which candidate they support, that truly, honest to God, believe that regardless of who wins, whether it's Trump or Joe Biden, it is going to result in civil war. And what you need to understand as an American is that a civil war in America is going to drag the whole fucking world with it. This cannot be escaped. The entire world is going to be dragged into your guys' political shit. And you know, I've got an uncle. He lives down in Texas. I was supposed to be visiting him in March. Literally the week that the whole world shut down because of the coronavirus, I was supposed to be going and visiting my uncle. This upcoming week, we were supposed to be taking a family vacation down to Phoenix, Arizona. I've never been to Phoenix. I've never been to Houston. It was going to be really fun, especially considering that I was, and still am, very depressed. And so being able to travel and, and go to these places, you know, kind of helps with that. But no, we can't because of the coronavirus and everything else is shut down. But the other thing, too, you have to consider is that a large number of these cities, and I'm not going to sit here and blame it on the Democrats because they're Democratic cities. I don't give a shit who is in charge of the cities, but they look like third world shitholes because of what has happened with the riots and the looting. I mean... Book a ticket to Afghanistan, why don't you? Because America is very, very quickly starting to look like some parts of Afghanistan. A thousand people just looted the Walmart in Philadelphia the other day and burnt half the city to the ground, and apparently that's Trump's fault too. Act like fucking a dog if you want to... That electric line just went... But I am getting a little bit ahead of myself on this, so I would like to take the time to go back in history, and I want to tell you about the very first time I ever remember hearing anything at all about this egregious man by the name of Donald Trump. I was, I don't know, maybe 10, maybe 11 years old when I first ever remember hearing anything notable about Donald Trump. And I can't remember if it was something that I either saw in the news or that I saw on the internet or that somebody else told to me about this really, really, really wealthy billionaire businessman out of New York that apparently, and you can fact check me on this, I'm not entirely sure whether or not this is accurate or true or not, but several years ago, Donald Trump sued a journalist for one million dollars because the journalist spelled his name wrong. And I'm pretty sure that's a real story. And if it wasn't that he spelled his name wrong, then it was some other mistake, like he said that he was a millionaire when really he's a billionaire. But either way, it was something really minor, really pathetic, really petty, and really trivial. And he sued this journalist for a million dollars. And I remember thinking, wow. You have to be such an asshole to do that. This journalist probably has never even seen a million dollars. Like, he has to work 10 to 15 years to make a million dollars, and you've got billions and billions of dollars, and you're so fucking petty that you're upset that somebody misspelled your name in the local newspaper. So I, I already didn't have a very um, um, nice view of Donald Trump. I thought he was a... Uh, um, I thought he was an egotistical psychopath, to be completely honest. So this is where I'm coming from. I, I already didn't like the man. The next time I remember seeing anything substantial that had Donald Trump in it was several years ago, there was this series on Discovery Channel called The Curiosity um, I think it was just called Curiosity, and they had different episodes. One of them was about like the construction and eventual demise of the Titanic, and one of them was like where they put a bunch of instruments on an airplane and purposely crashed it in the desert because they wanted to um, um, test a bunch of scientific measurements that had never been recorded before on what happens when an airplane crashes. And one of them was on what is the value of the United States of America, and it was hosted by Donald Trump. And in this documentary series, he went through all of the natural resources, all of the work and labor production, all of the um, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? All of the Federal Reserve, the cash stacks, whatever they have, investments, debt, he went through it all. And this was right around the time that I was starting to learn about money and finances for myself. And I actually understood some of the stuff that was being said. And it's like, oh, well, I mean, he's still an asshole, but at least he's a smart asshole. Like, he's intelligent, okay? You can't deny that Donald Trump is intelligent. Which is why, fast forwarding now to today, I find it so absolutely bonkers that people continue to harp and continue to complain about his $750 income tax return. And he says, it's because I'm smarter than everybody else. He didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero... And they're like, oh yeah, no, he's totally not smarter than... It's like, actually, no, you're, he, he's right, actually. Because if you don't understand how taxes work, then your monkey brain that's really stupid and immature is going to think he only paid $750 in income tax. He's cheating the system. He's a criminal. He's a, he's a tax evader. It's like, no, because you don't understand fundamentally how fucking taxes work. If you pay $750 in income tax, that's because you didn't make any income. And when you look at the millionaires and the ultra wealthy billionaires of the world, they don't make income, okay? That's not how they make their money. And they do that very much on purpose because it is the way the system is structured, where the amount of income you make, then you take a certain amount off on tax. So instead, they put all of the cash resources they have into other investments, assets, houses, businesses, you name it. Donald Trump has that all. So he's paid millions of dollars in other taxes in the form of uh, housing taxes and, and business taxes. But no, the only thing that people want to focus on is this tiny little microcosm of his income tax. That's because he doesn't make income. And so I get thinking here, what's the population of America? It's like 360 million people. So let's say, let's just say for the sake of argument, that 340 million of those are employed. And then the other, you know, 20 million are either homeless or illegal immigrants or they're unemployed Americans or they're part of the 1% one, uh, 1 of people that control all the businesses and companies where they're not working for a wage. So you get all these 340 million people that are working for a wage. They're going nine to five. They get the paycheck that comes down from the employer. They have no idea how it works. They just, yeah, I just show up at work and I get money in the bank. It's like you're fucking retarded. You have no idea how the taxes work, how your boss does the deductions on it for your employment insurance or all that other stuff. And you just, you just collect the paycheck, put it in the bank, and then you go buy dildos or something. So don't come and act like you're morally superior to Donald Trump and he is stupid because he's cheating the system. It's like you don't understand how the system works because if most people did, they would be self-employed, business, entrepreneurial type people if they actually cared about anything more than just I show up to work and press some buttons and then I make a hundred thousand dollars and then I go buy dildos and pay for hookers or whatever and smoke weed all day long. It's like you people don't understand how money and finances work and this man for all his faults, for all the faults of Donald Trump, he does understand money and finance and business, which is why undeniably over the past four years of the Trump administration, they've had the best economy that they've ever had. And again, people are only going to focus on the tiny little microcosm of the past six months. And that's not America's fault. That's not Donald Trump's fault because the entire world is suffering from the pandemic. I can't believe people keep blaming it on Trump and saying, oh, well, it's his fault for not shutting down early. And he's like, well, I did shut down early and you called me racist and xenophobic. And they're like, well, that's your fault too. And then they're like, oh, well, you need to open up the economy now and he's like I'm trying to open the economy and they're like you just want people to die and it's like well try putting yourself in his shoes like honestly put yourself in Donald Trump's shoes and what would you do when it doesn't matter what you do you got people screaming on both sides of the argument that you're a terrible awful person no wonder he doesn't give a shit what people think of him no wonder he uses vulgarity and calls people names and tells them to go fuck themselves because he doesn't want to deal with the stupidity of people that have no idea how money works no idea how business works, no idea how the economy operates or functions, telling him he's a racist because he blocked down China, China travel. Ugh. 
China, 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 China. And one of the things too that you have to recognize, you have to recognize this regardless of whether or not you like Donald Trump, is that this this is a two way street, okay? So. Yes, absolutely. There has never ever in the history of America been a president as vile and vulgar and egotistical and brash and brazen and 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 clownish to be completely frank and crazy as Donald Trump. That has never happened before in the history of America. But also, there has never, ever, ever been a time in the history of America that the American public has had such vile discourse towards the American president. The American president used to be a respectable job. At least it was when Obama was there. And yes, there were people that had their... Uh, doubts about Obama. There was people that were very much against Obama, but I think by and large people respected him and It's kind of like a two-way street, right? You expect that Donald Trump should be respectable to people But then you yourself are calling him the orange man and the orange clown and and all this stuff And the news media is making up lie after lie after lie after lie after lie And then you expect him to not come out and literally spew vile vulgarity from his mouth at you people People. You are insane and delusional. Totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. Any group of hate, I am, whether it's white supremacy, whether it's any other kind of supremacy, whether it's Antifa, whether it's any group of hate, I am very concerned about it and I'll do something about it. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. But I want to stop myself again and take you back once more to 2016 when this all started and this all began. Technically, it kind of started a little bit before then, kind of around the end of 2015. But specifically, regarding the election itself, in 2016 and in 2015 leading up to that, when there was this talk about Donald Trump as a potential candidate, he wasn't even yet the Republican candidate, he was a potential candidate, I knew instantly at that very moment he was going to be the president, and I'll tell you why. Because I thought in the back of my head that this guy's a clown and an idiot, and he's a reality show TV star, and he doesn't know anything about the American political system, and my thought process was, well, Americans are dumb and stupid and they're just gonna vote for whoever you know has the best celebrity status rating so I knew right then and there that Donald Trump was gonna be the president but not for the same reasons that maybe somebody else knew that he was gonna be the president my rationale was Americans are stupid therefore they're gonna vote in this man who's gonna literally destroy the entire country in four years and I was like well if they do that They've, they've made their choice. That's, that's their fault. They can live with whatever the consequences are because they're stupid. But now, looking back at it, I can see a lot of the logic and the rationale and the reasoning that led people to vote for Donald Trump. And a big part of it was the fact that a vote for Donald Trump was a vote for fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck the system. I'm done with this reoccurring, regurgitated bullshit for 50 plus years. Let's shake it up a bit. And that was the reason I knew that Donald Trump was going to be elected. Now, in 2016, I was just coming out of the closet. That summer leading up to the election, I had just been to my very first furry convention and my very first Pride Festival, and I had just come out to my parents as being gay. So for me, the number one concern I had for the 2016 presidential election was what's going to happen to the gay rights of America when this guy gets in. I knew full well that Donald Trump didn't know anything about politics, but I also knew that his running mate, the vice president, Mike Pence, was a lifelong politician and also very conservative. So my fear, my thought process was, if Donald Trump gets elected and he's the president, he's going to be off on the stage dancing a clown show for the world to see, but the real person who's going to be running the show, pulling the strings from behind, is going to be Mike Pence. And under Mike Pence presidency, we're going to lose abortion rights, we're going to lose gay rights, we're going to lose all this progressive stuff that has just come in in recent years to the states. And so I was legitimately afraid that that was going to happen. And again, not that it would have affected 
affected me personally because here in Canada we've had gay uh, marriage laws for over 20 years but I want to live in the States okay I don't want to be in Canada forever I wanted to and I want to I want to preface this I'll come back to it later wanted to being past tense live in California in Silicon Valley tonight parts of the Golden State now a fiery explosion of red orange and black thousands ordered to evacuate in darkness now fast forward to today today one day before the election what has been done by the Trump administration to hinder the rights of the gay and the LGBT or whatever um, perspective. And the only thing, the one and only thing that anybody can ever tell me is that, you know, the trans military ban. And so my follow-up question then is, well, does that personally affect you? Are you wanting to become, you know, a service member? Oh, well, no, I, I wouldn't join the military, but you know, those, those trans people that do want to join the military, they, they can't now. And I'm like, mm hmm, um, okay, uh, who are these people? I, I don't know these people. I don't even know if they exist, but you know, those, those trans people, because apparently there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and millions and thousands of trans people who all want to join the military. I don't particularly buy it. I mean, you have to consider, I was listening to a recent podcast on the Joe Rogan experience where he was talking to, I don't know, like a former military service veteran, and he was talking about the fact that the military really isn't for people who are trans. These are the types of people who are like, my pronouns are this, and, and you need to address me by this, and they've got the purple hair or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I don't particularly see these people being the types of people who want to, you know, like, die in the service name of the country or go to like some foreign um, um, place like Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever the fuck we're at war with now um, uh, where they don't they don't care about your pronouns there like seriously they're gonna shoot you regardless of whether you're he she XR ZR whatever the pronoun is they do not care so I don't particularly find much argument to the trans ban being you know, something that's like super detrimental to the LGBT community. Now, having said that, if there are currently serving active members who are trans, who, you know, got booted from the military because of it, now we have an argument. Now we have a debate. Now we have something that I can get behind. And I absolutely 100% support those people, if there are any, who've been booted out of the military simply for being trans. That is not right or fair or just. But again, I ask you, what has Mike Pence and Donald Trump in the past four years done to hinder the rights of the LGBT community? Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. Gay marriage laws are still here. This was the number one issue I had with Donald Trump and his administration back in 2016 was the potential damage it would cause to the uh, gay and LGBT community. But now, fast forward to today... Nothing has been done at all to hinder or change or reduce the rights of people. So I find this as a classic case, a very, very classic example of he who cried wolf too many times. Where you go around, or your chicken little screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the world is ending, Donald Trump is going to repeal gay marriage laws. And if you do it enough times, and then that's, that's not the outcome, the people just stop listening to you, okay? People stop listening to you because you're just spewing garbage out of nothing. And I still, to this day, have arguments with people on Twitter that honest to God believe that if Donald Trump gets reelected, gay marriage law is gone like that. Like literally the day after his inauguration in January, he'll sign into legislation that you can no longer have gay marriage. Uh, and it's like, no, no, this is not happening. You're absolutely out of your mind, psychotic, to believe that this is going to happen. And I am not going to say for a second that there's a 0% possibility that it won't. But my argument is, even if it does, even if Donald Trump and Mike Pence in their next four years of office completely do away with gay marriage, I would still support the president because that is not the number one issue, at least not for me, as of right frickin' now. And I think there's a lot of people that would agree that there's a lot more pressing issues that are right there on the immediate doorstep, like, I don't know, how about the communist infiltration 
Because if America falls to the communists, the whole world is going to get dragged along with it. So I think that's a little bit more pressing than having the right to go out and suck some fucking dick. And you know, it's rather interesting and kind of strange to be completely honest, because I will tell you straight up, I am not the only gay man that you will find, not even here in Canada, not even here in Calgary, Alberta, that supports Donald Trump. In fact, one of my very close gay friends in this city here is an avid Donald Trump supporter. In fact, I would say he is borderline psychotic on his obsession with the man. This, this individual who I am referencing quite literally has a shrine to Donald Trump in his basement, okay? I mean, he's got his office set up to look like the Oval Office with the big desk and everything and the fancy chair, and he's got, like, Trump memorabilia on the shelves and, like, a big frame picture there and, like, a little Donald Trump bobblehead or whatnot. This guy is obsessed, and so he's also gay. And I mean, he, he's actually taught himself to speak in the mannerisms of Trump. And I'll explain to you what I, uh, I mean by that. He does that thing where he's like talking and then he'll pause and then he'll keep talking and then he'll pause and then he'll like be, have these like really d dramatic stops. And if you watch the speech patterns of Trump, you'll definitely notice that, that kind of like he'll be saying something and then he'll stop and then he'll keep pausing like that to kind of grab your attention because it grabs your attention. He's a very, very, very professional, very good speaker. And so this, this friend of mine has taught himself to speak like this and he does the things with the hand too, you know, the, the, the hand movements. And one of the things that you'll also see Trump doing is if he ever, if he ever butts in or tries to interrupt somebody while they're talking, he'll go like this and point at them directly. And it's almost like, like a physical manifestation of knocking their, their words like literally out of the sky. He'll just go like that and they'll immediately stop talking and he'll continue talking. Like that's, that's a really good, like holy shit, that's a good public speaking technique to be able to do that and the people instantly stop talking. And so my friend does that. He does the things with the hand. He talks in the mannerism of Trump. It's a little bit strange to be completely honest but you know what he's a great guy really great guy really fantastic I, I love talking to him but I'll tell you the first time I met him I thought you are literally batshit crazy and I don't understand how anybody who is gay could support this man who's openly homophobic who's openly racist who's openly bigoted who's a white supremacist I don't understand how anybody could support him but through the course of the past year and all the literal bullshit that I have had to deal with within members of this own community, the LGBTQA+, whatever the fuck the acronym is now community, the crap that I have had to deal with, I have come more and more and more to find that Donald Trump is not homophobic at all. Not 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 at all. Which is why I find it so bizarre I mean, you're talking about a president who has set precedent forward that he wants to rid the world of homophobia. He wants to absolutely eradicate homophobia from the planet. And all these countries that still throw gay people off of buildings or whatever, he wants that to stop. Does that sound to you like somebody who is homophobic? No, somebody who's homophobic would be cheering that on. But I don't see the president doing that. And if you're interested in hearing about the literal human refuse that I have had to deal with within the LGBTQ community, then I encourage you to watch this video here, which I just released earlier, explaining some of the absolute bullshit that exists and the hypocrisy and the double standards that exist within this own community. <clears throat> now, going back to my friend, as I mentioned, he's a really great guy, and so I'm actually planning on going over to his place tomorrow evening, and we're going to throw a big election night party and, and spend a bunch of time with people visiting or whatever, and it'll just be an overall great evening um, all together. On the note of the election in 2016, it was a very depressing and rather um, existential, if you would call it that, that's the best word to describe it, a very depressing and existential evening where it almost literally felt like, you know, this is the end of civilization itself. I was watching the election live on CBC National News, and back at that time, we still had Peter Mansbridge as the main anchor for the CBC, and I swear to God, this man aged 10 years overnight. Like, through the course of the election, he was like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm reporting this. 
Donald Trump is the president of the United States. And then you got the people who are literally screaming from the rooftops and all the SJWs went crazy and people rioted for days. And then it was just like, boom. As soon as January hit, it was just like story after story after story after story. And we've been berated with these stories continuously nonstop for the past four fucking years. And so there are some people and... I'm not necessarily saying they're wrong, but there are some people who say that all of this wokeness and all of this cancel culture and all of the SJWs and the intersectionality and the critical race theory and Black Lives Matter and Antifa, this is all because of Donald Trump because he's the one that instigated it. And to a degree, I think they might have a valid point. I don't necessarily think that people would have gotten this outrage to the point that they have gotten outraged if you know Hillary Clinton was the president. But none of that would have mattered anyways because we would have been in fucking World War III with Syria and Russia. So take your pick. You either get cancel culture on one side or thermonuclear war on the other. And as bad as cancel culture is, I too will admit that I'll take that over thermonuclear war with Russia. But I also don't necessarily think that that's a valid excuse for the childish behavior of the radical left that we have seen through the course of this past summer and over the past year that we have witnessed. To stand there and say, oh, well, it's all Donald's Trump fault because, you know what, we're rioting and we're breaking shit and we're burning everything because of him. And then to say, oh, yeah, we'll just stop, you know, like if... if if he gets out of office, as soon as Joe Biden gets elected and he's the president, oh yeah, riots done, Black Lives Matter done, Antifa done. No, 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 no. These people are insane. These people are coming for blood. They're coming for blood. And let me tell you, they are going to come for blood regardless of who wins tomorrow night. They're going to be coming for blood and you better hide your kids and your wife and oh man, it's going to be fucking brutal. It literally reminds me of like somebody saying, oh, why are you being so violent? Stop being so violent. Oh, you're totally violent. Stop being violent. You're not justified in being violent. Meanwhile, they're wielding a machete over your fucking head trying to cut your throat. On the note of my friend who is a Trump supporter slash total Trump radical, if you will call him that, he has gotten, like, actual death threats here in Canada. We're not even American. We can't even vote. He's gotten death threats over the fact that he supports Trump. He's got a Trump uh, sign on the front lawn, and he's had his house fucking vandalized by these insane people. These people are ridiculously insane. Because you want to know what? What they're doing with all of the rioting and the looting and the justified burning and the justified killing of needless people just because they've got a Trump flag or whatever, or, or they're a white supremacist and they're a fucking Nazi because they have a Trump sign on their car. It's like, fuck you! You're the ones that are out there burning the city. You're the ones that are out there looting the city. You are not justified because Donald Trump is an asshole to tear the country from limb to limb to limb until it looks like fucking third world shit. Oh, but Evan, what about the fact that, you know, like, Donald Trump's a total womanizer and he, like, raped a bunch of people at some Russian hotel room where he peed on them or whatnot? All right. First of all, when it comes to stuff of that nature, the whole Me Too movement or whatever, I think that right from the get-go, there was genuinely disheartened people that were taking advantage of that. I think that overall it has done more good then it has done bad because of, you know, things like Harvey Weinstein being uh, called out and sent to prison and, and that. And, and, you know, women actually standing up for their rights in the workplace. But I am not going to for a second say that it hasn't been taken way far to the other extreme. Where it's like on one extreme, you've got all these actors and rich people and jackasses like Trump totally uh, abusing these women or whatever and touching them. And now it's gone so far to the other extreme where, you know, you can be fired from your job because 35 years ago, you were in like some frat room party while you were drunk as hell at a college uh, party, and now you're literally being accused of rape. Hello, I'm talking about Justice Kavanaugh, okay? Are you a gang rapist? No. I cannot imagine what you and your family have gone through. Would just, you say you've been through hell? I, I've been through uh, hell and then some. I would never do to them what you've done to this guy is going to destroy 
the ability of good people to come forward because of this crap. Boy, y'all want power. God, I hope you never get it. I hope the American people can see through this sham. If you are not familiar with what happened to Justice Kavanaugh, it is kangaroo court at the highest fucking degree. I cannot believe watching what happened when this did. Back in, I think it was 2017 or 2018, when Justice Kavanaugh was announced to become a new Supreme Court Justice, one of, one of the nine Supreme Court Justices, he was, I think, I'm pretty sure, elected by Donald Trump. And almost instantly, people were rioting, people were absolutely outraged over the fact that this man had been put on the Supreme Court seat. And this woman came forward and accused him without any absolute, no proof at all of rape, and it just went on for days, and I watched the entire thing unfold on YouTube. It was like this fucking train wreck. It was absolutely god right awful. So that is why I find it very, very hard to believe when a lot of these same people who are out there screaming about this man who is basically as pure as the fucking white snow as you can possibly get. Like, I mean, this guy hadn't even gotten detention before in his entire life. That's how, um, that's how good this man's reputation was. Talk about ruining a good man's reputation. So that's why I find it very, very hard to trust any one of these people when they say stuff like, oh, Kavanaugh's a rapist, and then they'll come out and say, Donald Trump's a white supremacist. It's like, you are living in a fantasy land where Nazis are goose-stepping down the goddamn street. How many times do I have to reject? I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. From the time I'm five years old, I rejected them. And to prove to you exactly how far radical and left these absolute woke lunatics have gotten, I absolutely implore you to go watch some of Tim Pool's stuff regarding specifically Daryl Davis. If you're not familiar with who Daryl Davis is, he is a black blues musician who is most well known for de-radicalizing over 300 members of the Ku Klux Klan. This man has done more good for the black community, he's done more good for racism than probably anybody on this entire fucking planet, because if it wasn't for him, then there would still be these 300 additional, to however many Ku Klux Klan members there are today, all these additional 300 people would be out there yelling racial slurs or whatever, and, and calling for, you know, like, the white supremacist race. And so, as a result of the de-radicalization, he's been given, as a gift, the robes from these people that have given it to him as, like, a historical item of of artifact, and because he's in possession of these robes, these insane, woke lunatics, mostly Antifa, accused him of being a white supremacist. They accused him, a black man, who fought white supremacy of being a white supremacist. And these are the same people who accuse, I don't know, somebody like Ben Shapiro of being a Nazi, a Jewish man. Oh, th that is, that is just amazing. Jewish Nazis. And I mean, if we're being entirely fair here, if we're being entirely fair here, Hitler himself was a Jew. But I absolutely do not think that, you know, Jews are running through the street, going into people's homes, pulling out their kids and children, and shipping them on box tires to the fucking gas chamber. And I get accused of being a Nazi all the time on social media because, number one, I support Trump. Number two, I support free speech, which apparently now is a right-wing um, um, concept. I never knew. Free speech is supposed to protect the speech of all people. Right? Left? It doesn't matter. But the people who are so far woke on the left seem to believe that the only people on planet Earth that ever exercise the right of free speech are those who have something wrong to say and something racist to say. And we don't want them to say that racist thing. Therefore, free speech, gone just like that. Uh, civil rights, gone just like that. These people are bringing in a communist dystopia, and they think it's a utopia, but it's a dystopia. I'll tell you something. There's a very, very famous saying when it comes to this. I know the road to utopia, and it goes directly over your house. Because these people have absolutely no regard for anyone else. They will go right over your house if it means they get to a utopia. And it doesn't matter if they trample on your rights or the entire country burns in hell because of what they're doing.
oh, you know, what about the accusation that Donald Trump is just the modern day Hitler? And I see this all the time, especially when he talks about things like the 1719 Project, where they're supposed to be, you know, teaching American exceptionalism. They talk about imperialism and fascism, and, and they accuse him of being Hitler. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's, let's actually take your argument and parse it apart here for a second. First of all, if Donald Trump is Hitler, he is a really, really, really terrible version of Hitler who can't get shit done because I don't really know how long it took Hitler to, you know, like secure his power with an iron fist. But if Donald Trump was Hitler, we wouldn't even be having an election. Hello? There would be no election because he would be the dictator that you wish he was controlling the entire world. He would have grabbed America with an iron fist fist and threw out democracy and threw out the court systems and made himself the one and only ruler of the land and yet here we are we're having an election so I fail to see how this man is in any way Hitler. The other thing too is that he's not anti-semitic which apparently these people actually are anti-semitic and extremely racist to be completely frank. And yet they have the galls and the wherewithal to accuse Donald Trump of being the white supremacist. It's like projection at the highest level. This is gaslighting at the highest level. He's a white supremacist. He's a Nazi. He's Hitler. And meanwhile, what are you doing? You're running through the streets claiming uh, uh, that all white people are evil and the scum of the earth and that America is the worst nation on the country. And I don't understand that. You want to talk about what the worst nation on the country is? Go to fucking Uzbekistan where they don't even have running water. Go to North Korea, where you literally get shot by opposing the state. Go to communist fucking China and try it out there for a month. And I guarantee you, when you come back to the States, you're going to be singing a whole different tune. Let me tell you that. Because I personally haven't been out of the country. I can't speak from personal experiences. But I listen to and I hear the arguments of people that have gone to these foreign uh, countries where there are conflict zones and there's wars and there's bombs being dropped and there's drone strikes and people don't even know whether or not they can go and walk their dog without being shot by down from some freaking missile in the sky and so why don't you go live there for a couple weeks and then come back and screech about how the America is the worst fucking country that ever lived because And the final thing before I go that I want to address because I can literally talk days about all of the stuff there's there's literally four years of absolute lunacy and garbage and bullshit and, and crap that I have had to put up with. I want to address two things before I, I end with the video here. The first is that I remember the very, very, very first time Donald Trump started talking about, you know, fake news. Fake news this and you're fake news and that's fake news. And I remember sitting there thinking this guy is delusional and he's totally off his rockers and he has no idea what he's talking about. And the news media like, what do you mean fake news? The news is the news is the news. Like it's, it's not meant to be propaganda and now looking at the news when you know somebody's standing there with a microphone oh, we'll talk about the peaceful protest and meanwhile there's a building burning behind them it's like holy shit I can't believe this man was actually right and a large part of it too comes down to this year in particular with the coronavirus Donald Trump was the only one harping on China harping on China harping on China and I'm not necessarily saying that what he did was the best you know, course of action. Because tariffs on China don't do anything but, you know, jack up the prices of the consumer good. Because the businesses are never going to pay the difference. They're just going to jack up the prices and it's the consumer on the other end that suffers from the tariffs. So I don't think for a second that, you know, Donald Trump's trade war with China did anything good or just for the American people. But the fact that he's willing to call out China on the hypocrisy. I mean, this is a country that has a state-sanctioned organ harvesting program and they're on the head of the fucking United Nations and they're on the head of the WHO and Trump is like this is not good this is very 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 bad and wrong and he's he'll take those hits of you know, the rude xenophobic he'll take those hits of racism he'll take those hits of xenophobia because it's one thing to call the president xenophobic it's another thing if he did nothing at all and China just you know moved in and, and just set up camp one day and we're all just like what the hell happened well why didn't nobody stop against this. Well, because the president that you had trying to stop it, you all accused of a dozen different things that were not very nice and pleasant or good.
So those are the two things that I want to also address, because starting with the pandemic, when they started having all the lies and the WHO said that, um, you know, there was no evidence of human-human transmission, and then now apparently they're saying that lockdowns were bad, even though they were pushing them in the beginning, and now it's like, I don't even know why anybody listens to this Dr. Tedros clown over at the WHO. His reputation is just gone like that over the past year, and the more and more and more and more I continue to hear about China, the more and more and more and more I find myself actually liking Donald Trump because he's willing to put his foot down and say this country is going to destroy the fucking planet if we don't do something about them. And I honestly believe that. I think that even more than, you know, civil war in America, even more than um, Donald Trump's, uh, you know, trade war with China, if we don't do something, and I'm not saying that anything can be done, but if nothing's done, then China's just going to set up camp one day and there's going to be nothing you can do about it. And we're all going to live in a, in a communist uh, dictatorship where people are being shot in the street for, you know, standing up to the right for free speech. But the final thing I wanted to address about Donald Trump before I go, which you cannot deny, and I, I really do wish that people who were on the left who despise Donald Trump would actually watch and listen to his rallies, and I know they won't, because these people quite literally think that Donald Trump's voice in their ear is like poison, like they're drinking poison if they listen to Donald Trump. He's funny. He's really funny, and I cannot believe how much I have missed out on in the past four years by thinking that this man is awful and not wanting to listen to him. And I was sitting a month and a half ago, I was sitting in my house with my parents, and we were watching the Republican National Convention where Mike Pence was speaking. And remember, back to the beginning of where all this began. I despise Mike Pence because he is Christian, because he is not for abortion, because he is anti-LGBT, um, um, whatever. I despise him. So I didn't listen, frankly, to a single thing that he said. And it wasn't necessarily that I was actively avoiding listening to what Mike Pence had to say, but I just wasn't interested in listening to him. But I sat there and I listened to him speak during the Republican National Convention, and he sounds to me like a man who is very um, well structured. He sounds like somebody who's got his shit together, like his life is is good. It's a it's a good place, and and then you get these people whose life is literal turmoil and chaos, and they're the ones preaching about how everything needs to change and bend to their very will. And I'm like, this man is rational. This man seems to be fairly understanding. This man is well-toned. He's not as brash or as brazen as Trump. And I really, really, really do believe that if Trump was not at the helm of the Trump presidency, based on policies alone, if it was Mike Pence leading it, then there would be so much more support for him because there wouldn't be this visceral reaction, this visceral hate for the Trump presidency. Because if it was just based on policy alone, Trump has the better policies than Mike Pence. You can go over it. You can watch the debates. They're two hours long. Each of them, first debate was awful, terrible, garbage. Both of them acted like five-year-old children in a shouting match. Second debate, much, much better. It was, it was more... Um, more what you would expect from a, a, a presidential debate. Um, but Trump is funny. Like, listen to his rallies. He's hilarious. He's making jokes. And I mean, his official YouTube channel, okay, the president of the United States YouTube channel, is nothing but like a meme fest over the past week and a half year. Like, meme after meme, meme after meme. Here's how you can spot a zombie. Look for someone who has a corpse-like appearance, exhibits aggressive behavior, craves human flesh, and utters incoherent moans and groans. Uh, I don't know. With your help, we can prevent the zombie uprising. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. He is the meme lord in chief, and you can't deny that that isn't funny. And even if you make memes against Trump because you hate him so much, those memes are inspired by the man, the very man that you claim to hate so much. So don't come to me for a second and tell me that Trump is like literally Hitler and the worst because he's been the best fucking thing that has ever happened to late night comedy. People, you know, the reply guys, as soon as Trump posts, they reply. As soon as Trump posts, they reply. And they have an entire business 
just run on this framework where they reply and then they get followers and then they get people to donate them. People make their livelihoods off of Trump and why are you so eager to get rid of them then if your livelihood's gonna go like that? Boom! You think uh, late night news media is gonna exist if Joe Biden's in? Boring old Joe Biden and as Trump calls him Sleepy Joe. He's literally a dead man. There's nothing you can say or joke about him. There's, there's no jokes to be made. He's literally a dead fucking man. So yeah, make him the president and just watch as all of those TV shows and ratings or whatever, their ratings just tank through the fucking floor. So, I mean, I am extremely physically exhausted being so expressive right now, so I'm gonna have to end the video right now. There's so much more I can talk about. There's probably more I will talk about in a future video, but I hope this was insightful to somebody. I hope this provided you a little insight into my brain, and maybe if you are currently on the left, or you're gay, or you support progressive rights, and I said before, I am as progressive as I can as you can possibly get. I am for universal basic income, even though I understand the finances behind it and think that overall in the long term, it's going to do a lot more damage to the financial system than in the short term. I still am like, hey, universal basic income. Nobody should be out on the street, you know, starving because they're homeless. I am for um, um, abortion, I'm for pro-choice, because there's a difference. There is a difference between pro-choice and pro-abortion. That's an entire another hour-long video that I'm not going to get into, but I am pro-choice. I am pro-LGBT. Obviously, I'm fucking gay. So there's that to contend with. I tend to come from a religious and conservative background, but I cannot stand the conservative government, especially the one that we have right here in Alberta. Alberta is the most conservative um, province in Canada. It's sometimes called the 52nd state of America, just because the rest of Canada tends to hate us so much for being so conservative and I don't like that. I don't like living in the Bible Belt. I am atheist. I am not religious. I am nothing that the traditional Republican Party stands for and yet I support the president because he's the best fucking thing you've got in so many years and I just wish that Americans who, who don't even want to listen to him speak would just realize, wake up and realize the good that this man has done for the country. He is vile, he is despicable, he uses vulgarity, he is a bully, he pushes people around, but he's your bully. He is America's bully because he's standing up for your rights and he is not going to bend the knee to radical, woke indoctrination or fucking cancel culture. And that is that. Other than that, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.